the regular broadcast of the Minneapolis Local Board of Appeal and Equalization meeting for April 18th, 2022 will now continue. Good afternoon. Before we begin the meeting, I'm going to turn it over to Assessor Momquist to make a, a few comments. Assessor Momquist. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair Bland. To the clerk's office, should we establish a quorum first before I begin? Yes, please. Okay, do you want me to um, get through the, um, past the agenda and then you can comment? Okay, that would be great, thank you. Sure. Good afternoon. Welcome to this live broadcast of our virtual meeting. This meeting includes remote participation of members as authorized under Minnesota statutes section 13D.021, due to the declared local health pandemic. The city will be recording and posting this meeting to the city's website and YouTube channel as means of increased increasing public awareness, uh, access and transparency. This meeting is public and subject to the Minnesota Open Meeting Law. For the record, my name is Faye Bland and I am the chair of the Local Board of Appeal and Equalization. I will now call this meeting to order. The open meeting law requires a roll call vote be conducted during a virtual meeting and a certification form will be completed for each local board meeting. This initial roll call will allow the city assessor to complete the certification form on behalf of the board members with a verbal signature. Will the clerk please call the roll so that we may verify the presence of a quorum? Board member Amba. Present. Board member Bodertha. Present. Board member Palmer. Present. And Chair Bland. Present. There are four members present. Let the record reflect a quorum of the board is present. <clears throat> we will proceed to the agenda and a copy of a copy of which was posted for public access to the city's legislative information management system, which is available at limsminneapolismn.gov. May I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, <clears throat> moved by Budurtha and seconded by Palmer to adopt the agenda. With that, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Amba. Aye. Board member Budurtha. Aye. Board member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. That motion passes and the agenda is adopted. Now, Ms. Uh, Assessor Palmquist, is this where you want to insert some comments? Chair Bland, thank you again for your time and for coming back this afternoon. I know that was a sh short turnaround time between the AM and the PM session, so thank you very much. I believe we have approximately 18 cases for you this afternoon. In addition to reading in um, some a list of recommended values for you that we've reserved some time at the end of this session. For the 1 to 2 p.m. session, we have nine hearings that have been scheduled. However, we have not heard back from the first four of those. Um, and I am seeing that we did we did have one person, we have two other people on the line. So um, you can go ahead and get started with agenda item number three. However, I do not believe we have item, agenda items three, four, five, or six on the call. Thank you very much. Here to help. Thank you. So we're skipping one and two, is that correct? <clears throat> I'm going to need the clerk's office. I thought the first agenda item was number three. Chair Bland and uh, Assessor Malmquist, items one and two are roll call and adoption of the agenda, and the business starts with item number three. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, clerk. At appeal number one. Okay. We have 24 appeals scheduled this afternoon. These cases were all received less than 10 days before the LBAE convened. 
so there will not be an assessor's report for these cases. I will now summarize the process for conducting hearings in this virtual format. First, we will call upon the applicant who will be given five minutes to present their appeal. When your case is called, you will need to press star six on your phone to activate your microphone and wait to hear the pre-recorded message before speaking. We ask that you state your name and address for the record and then present your appeal to the board. Next, we'll call on the assessor staff. If there is uh, someone present, they will have five minutes. Um, and then the board will consider and take action at the end of each hourly grouping. Property owners are notified of the decision by mail after the board has adjourned. With that, let's begin with the appeals. Appeal application for 3545 18th Avenue South, case number 22-0449. The applicant is Courtney Klingen. Is uh, the um, applicant on the board, on the uh, line? Madam Chair, the applicant is not on the line and did not verify that they would be in attendance today. Thank you. Um, do the uh, board members have any comments or questions at this point regarding this case? <clears throat> Hearing none, we will, we will move on to the next item. Appeal application for 4730 Xerxes Avenue North, case number 22-0450. The applicant is Pamela Gail O'Shea. Is Ms. O'Shea on the line? Madam Chair, the applicant is not on the line and did not uh, verify in advance that they would be attending. Thank you. Um, any discussion or questions by the board regarding this uh, appeal? <clears throat> Very well. Appeal application for 1816 3rd Avenue North, case number 22-0451. The application is Michael Amen. Is this applicant on the line? Madam Chair, the applicant is not on the line and did not verify that they would be in attendance today. Thank you. Um, discussion or questions by the board? Appeal application for 7 08 24th Avenue Northeast, case number 22-0452. The applicant is Delima McKay. Is the applicant on the line? Madam Chair, same for this applicant is not on the line and did not verify that they would be in attendance today. Thank you. Um, questions from the board? Next is the uh, appeal application for 3852 Stevens Avenue, case number 22-0453. The applicant is Michelle Mondew. Is Ms. Mondew on the line? And I'm sure this is a write-in case. So okay. the applicant is not on the line. Thank you. All board members, comments or questions? Next, the appeal application for 3220. Blaisdell Avenue, case number 22-0455. The applicant is Michael Pedersen. Is Mr. Madam Pedersen Chair, on the line? Madam Chair, the applicant is on the line and unmuted. Please, uh, you will have five minutes to present for each of these properties. They are the next four. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is Mike Pedersen. I'm calling in about 3220 Blaisdell Avenue South. Um, it's actually, uh, there's four coming up, including this one. Um, one is not like the other three, but these three that we'll go through today, I'm just trying to understand the tax increase because I have about 40 properties in Minneapolis. And for some reason, these had elevated tax increases anywhere from 10 to 11%. And I'm trying to understand because all my buildings are within 15 minutes of each other. Um, and all the buildings I'm bringing up today I've had for a number of years, but suddenly there's a spike of a 10, 10 to 12 percent increase in taxes, but it doesn't hit all my buildings and it doesn't hit buildings within 500 feet of each other. So I'm trying to understand the rhyme and reason of it. That's that's what really what I'm trying to understand. Is there anything specifically you want to tell us about 3220 Blaisdell Avenue? Well, I've had it for about 12 years and we've really done nothing with it. It was a foreclosure and it was in good shape. He just walked away from it with the bank. 
um, and my tax increases have been consistent every year, but not at 10%. So I'm trying to just, I'm trying to understand the justification why suddenly there's a 10% a increase on it. Okay. Um, we need to take each one of these separately, Mr. Pedersen, if you okay. will, please uh, play along here. Um, next sure. is the appeal for 32, uh, 30 Nicollet Avenue, case number 22-0456. Uh, do you want to go ahead and make any comments regarding this particular property? Yeah. Um, this is a bigger building. This again, I bought about 12 years ago. Um, the increase again is 10%. This building is literally across maybe a, a block away from the last one we just talked about. Um, this is on Nicollet versus Blaisdell. And again, it's a 10.2% increase, which our rents are not going up. We have a lot of vacancies, so I, I can't, I don't understand the justification for the tax increase, I guess, because I have about 12 buildings on Nicollet, about 10 on Blaisdell, and only a handful got major increases, even though they all get three to four every year. I had this handful I'm calling about today, all got 10 to 12%. So again, I'm just trying to understand the justification where these numbers are coming from. Thank you. Our next um, appeal is for the property at 2220 Grand Avenue South, Case number 22-0457, Mr. Pedersen. Thank you. Um, this is a duplex and the taxes uh, went up 20%. And again, this is a rental property. We're trying to keep rents down. I don't understand why it went up 20%. Uh, again, I'm just trying to understand the rationalization. We can't maintain rents. We cannot keep renters with a 20% tax increase. Um, and I've had this building for six years. So it's not a new purchase, no new financing. So again, I, I don't understand the justification again for a 20% tax increase. Finally, the application for 3627 Nicollet Avenue South, case number 22-0458. Go ahead, Mr. Pedersen. Thank you. And again, I'm not trying to be a negative or repeating myself, but this, I just pulled up these four um, and this is the last one. So thank you for your time. This one again is up, this one's up 10.2%. And again, there's nothing different than this than all the other buildings I just brought up. Um, we have not done any major remodels. So there's nothing different going on. The rents have stayed the same. So, and I've had this one for over 10 years also. So I, again, I don't understand the justification for these particular out of the three out of the four went up to 10 to 12 percent and the other went up to 20 percent all the rest of my buildings in my portfolio went up two to four percent which is manageable with our rent increases but again it's just these four i'm just questioning it uh, i'm not challenge i'm challenging it but i just want to understand the rationale that's what i'm trying to so i can run my business more efficiently every year too so that's it thank you mr Pedersen. um Board members, um, here's an opportunity to ask questions of Mr. Feddersen before he's no longer on the line with us. Uh, I have some questions for the app appellant. Sure. This is Mr. Palmer. Um, hello. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, let's just take the first one, uh, 3220 Blaisdell. Um, yep. I, I think you're looking at the tax increases on that. So you're paying okay. the taxes on what the value was last year of 1,679,000. The value this year for 22 on that one actually only increased 3.1%. So I, I haven't looked at the other ones, but I, I think the increase in value that we're talking about is less than the tax increase you have, which was actually a change in value from the 2020 to the 21. So th that's one discrepancy. I just want you to clear that up. Um, okay. The second one is um, you say your rents are going down. Um, so right. if what I'm going to take the first building, you've got it's got uh, six one bedrooms, six two bedrooms, and two three bedrooms. Is that correct? 3220 Blaisdell? Yeah, some of those um, were one bedrooms that the last owner converted into two bedrooms. So they're really not that large. So yeah. So what? So let's say on January of, of 20. 22 versus January of 21. What, what's the average rent? Did, is it the same? Did it go down? The average rents are going down because we're giving a month free for the last two years. The vacancy okay, so rate in Minneapolis has gone from 3% to 11%. Okay, and, and, and your vacancy, you don't talk about that. Um, 
what what was in these buildings? What's your vacancy percent in 22? Is it, is it above five percent? Yes, we're about seven percent right now across the metro. I mean, sorry, in Minneapolis proper. Okay, um, I you know it. What these cases are are really hard to to do on a, a local level because. Um, you know, to really get into them, we should have income expense statements and that type of thing on them. So I hesitate sure. to do a lot of moves on it. I'm just trying to tell you where the assessment came from here. And um, I do know that um, working with apartments the last few years, that even though rents have flattened out a little bit compared to the, when they went up a few years ago, the cap capitalization rates have continued to stay the same or go down, which it causes an increase in value. So. Um, that's just the market being what it is. Lots of money trying to buy these properties and a lot of the income expense hasn't changed in the last couple of years, but the, the cap rates have continued to go down on them. So uh, that's just my general comment on them. Yeah, and my general comment is when we're trying to push through rent control and if taxes go up 10% and rent can only go up 3% and our vacancies keep going down or going up and we're dropping our rents or giving them on free, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. There's, it's not sustainable. Okay, that, that's all my comment on that. Thank you. Any other comments from the board members or questions? Not, this Mr. Is, oh, I'm sorry. I have a, a question, uh, board member uh, Badurtha. Uh, my question, or not question, but comment is, um, uh, going forward, uh, anybody analyzing uh, income property such as this, and as uh, Mr. Palmer said, you know, income and expenses are important. Uh, that is very important to for an, helping analyze these uh, properties. So any further or any other uh, reviews that you request, uh, it would be great to supply those uh, for analysis. Sure, and I, I would do anything you guys would ask. Uh, just, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years. And I've never challenged ever in my life um, taxes. I just haven't because they've been very moderate. We can handle it. We can absorb and we can plan. But when I'm getting 10 to 20% increases, that's pretty aggressive. We're not getting those kind of rents and our expenses are definitely not going down to cover that. So that's the reason why I'm challenging you. I want to be a good landlord. I want to add value to my properties. I want to keep improving them, but you can't do it at these rates. Thank you, Mr. Fedderson. Uh, we will Thank you. take up this case uh, and, as a board and uh, notify you of our decision. Thank okay, you thank you all for your time. I, I really sure. appreciate it. Bye bye. Okay, board members, um, we will be um, looking at these appeals and making some decisions. So let's start with the first one. Go back to the beginning, appeal application for 3545 18th Avenue South. By the way, before we continue with this, I want to clarify something I talked about this morning. Um, if we have a, um, a motion that is not seconded, it will die for the lack of second and somebody else can make a motion. Um, or somebody can um, second it, even if they disagree with it, so we can have discussion. In either case, until we have a second, we can't really discuss the motion. I just want to make sure you understand either way is acceptable, um, whether you whether we not, um, not second something or second it only for us to be able to make, um, have discussion. However, if there is no second, somebody needs to make another motion not just stand and stare at each other. So be involved. Okay, that's my um, lecture for the afternoon. Um, appeal application for 3545 18th Avenue South, case number 22-0449. Questions or discussion? Uh, a discussion uh, would be uh, from member Badurtha is the appraisal. Um, the 345,000 late in 2021 um, might be a, uh, an indication that our value or the assessor's value of 409 uh, might be a little high. Uh, this is Mr. Palmer. I I would agree. Again, I, I think the comps are pretty close on those to the, to the actual um, uh, subject on that appraisal. Um, they have if the date is September of 21, I my my take is it should be a little higher than this appraisal. There's still something at the end of the year. The values were still going up, but that would be 
you know, something north of this 345, just slightly north of that would be, uh, I think, a fair value. Ken was of the same opinion that uh, starting with the appraisal being um, about six months old and a few months old by the first of the year, that uh, 345 is kind of a starting point. And uh, where we go from there, I had bought 350, 355 <coughs> would be um, a possibility. Um, anyone care to make a motion? I, I move to uh, reduce the value to 355, and I believe that's what the owner requested too. Second. I'll second that. Okay. Moved by Bedurfa and um, seconded by Alma to reduce the value of <clears throat> 3545 18th Avenue South to $355,000. i will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board Member Amba? Aye. Board Member Bodurtha? Aye. Board Member Palmer? Aye. And Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carries. Next, we have the uh, appeal for 4730 Xerxes Avenue North. Are there questions or discussion from the board members regarding this property? Uh, my only discussion is that she didn't provide any information except that it was too high. I believe we didn't we have one earlier on Xerxes North this morning and it was a totally different property, a lot larger, but um, it ended up we didn't do anything with that value. So I given no information, I, I guess I would tend to just hold the value. Discussion. Um, there really was no information. The only information provided um, was there were no improvements or maintenance for 20 years. OK, um, <clears throat> the owner sees the value at 149,000. Um, two, three years ago, it was assessed at 179.5. Um, I can say that, you know, nothing but, you know, even dog houses sell for more than 149 these days. So um, that's kind of a um, high in the sky idea that we took 149 as a reasonable price. Um, after looking at what was provided, <clears throat> which wasn't much, um, I was inclined to either keep the value or reduce it maybe by $10,000. $10, um, I would entertain a motion. <clears throat> Chair Bland, this is Rebecca. I, I do just want to remind you about the guidance provided by the Department of Revenue in terms of um, reductions. Remember, the um, property owner needs to present evidence that would support a reduction. And the um, property owner really hasn't done that in this case. That's correct. Thank you, Assessor Monquist. Uh, is there a motion? I move to sustain the value at $263,000. I'll second that motion. Okay. So um, we can move by the Dirtha and seconded by Palmer to sustain the value of 4730 Xerxes Avenue North. The clerk, will you please call the roll? Board Member Amba. Aye. Board Member Bodertha. Aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carried. Next, we have um, the application for 1816 Third Avenue North, case number 220451. Discussion regarding this property. Uh, again, uh, this is um, Member Berdertha. Uh, there's an a recent appraisal after the appraisal date, of course, uh, it was in April of this year, just weeks ago, I guess. And there's a sale. Uh, it must be, a, I don't know if it's a pending sale because it isn't even 22nd here, is it? Um, of 270, appraisal is 274. 
and this looks like a sale of 270. So I think we're going to be looking at reducing it down towards that level. The comments? Yeah, this is uh, member Palmer. I, I was just trying to determine if it's hard to tell if that's an arm's length deal on that. I'm assuming it is, but I don't know if it was listed or how that sale price got to be 270 and the appraisal is, is 274. I did notice for this area that, and it's appraisal um, to me, this is the right one. Um, this house for this area was built in 1995. So it must've been vacant or a tear down and then rebuilt in, in 1995 because there's all his comps are much older than that. Um, so I, it, it's, I don't know how you can call them comps or if that's really good indication, but the, just the point that this house is, is a lot newer in, in, in this neighborhood than most of them. Yeah, I noticed that too, the two of the comps are over a hundred years old compared to something that was built in 95. So that, um, that you know, calls into question. And I, and I looked at the appraisal, there was no adjustment made for um, age of property. So um, that's a little, um, concerning. Um, I also, um, it also has an attached garage, which I assure you nothing else in the neighborhood has. Um, some of them don't even have garages at all. Um, the, um, I believe it was that, that there was a sale at 270 and the appraisal came in at 274. Um, if the appraisal appraiser thought it was worth 346 as the value is stated here, there's no way that he or she would have said so on a, on a sale of 270. The fact that it came, the appraisal came in above the 270 indicates that the appraiser had no difficulty whatsoever in um, uh, establishing the value at, at at least the 270. So um, 346 does seem high to me, even though it's a newer property, but I have no idea how high. <clears throat> yeah, I, I would agree. I would just, and I don't know the number, but if, if you made adjustments for the age, you'd have to at least come up with 20,000 or something on that, um, which to my mind, it should be, it should be at least 300,000 for a newer property at just on the limited information that we have. Yeah, the fact that we have an appraisal really throws things off because you would, we, we tend to rely on those appraisals, but there's such a discrepancy here that um, it makes it hard to you know, know where to go with that. <clears throat> and by the way, they, um, I think the offer that they got was $20,000 over their ask. So they were at 350, they got a 370 um, offer and then it appraised at 275. Did I see 270 over the 250? And then it appraised at 274. In any case, the 346 does seem high. Last year it was assessed at 323. Somebody want to throw out a motion? Uh, I had a quick question. I was looking on the appraisal and I, and I apologize because I didn't know it was a, a brand new building. I hadn't paid that close attention to that, but um, I was wondering some of these others, I'm looking for the on the appraisal, uh, the date uh, or age of the building, um, where it is. If these are these all other ones, and the, uh, the first one is 111 years old. The next one is 81, oh. and the next one is 112. Okay, yeah, so the adjustments were made. Yeah, right, he's the only adjustments adjustments they made were for condition, and they actually made minus adjustments and on uh, the comparables instead of. Uh, so they're considering them in better condition. The last two at minus 14 and minus 15,000 which I would expect to be uh, uh, plus adjustments uh, because they're older, but um, so. Which gives me some doubt on the, where I think about what I think about the appraisal where it, made where it should be, and I'm, I'm gonna give less weight to the appraisal at this point. Right. I don't know. Um, what I what did the appellant ask for in the value? I've got to find that two hundred seventy thousand. So they they've asked for the appraisal amount. 
Well, I'll make a motion to reduce value to 300,000. Okay. Your second? I'll, I'll second that. Okay. Um, it's been moved by Parr and seconded by Duderta to um, adjust the value to 300,000. So just clerk, please call the roll. Board member Amba. Aye. Board member Buderta. Aye. Board member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Next uh, appeal is for 708 24th Avenue Northeast, case number 22-0452. Questions or discussions regarding this property? I'll just mention that the only thing she says is it's uh, the, the uh, felon says uh, deferred maintenance and no driveway. Or the assessors have it as fair quality and average minus condition, and the value is only 130,000. Um, with no further information, I would hold this value. Okay. Anybody else? Um, <clears throat> it's not unusual in that area. Um, that there are no garages. There's some couple of really small lots. There are two properties that sold um, within a couple of blocks of that <clears throat> property. It's just north of Edison High School. Um, and the other two um, sold for 243 and 210. Neither one had a garage nor had any uh, large enough lots for the garage. I think what struck me on this one was um, the owner is asking, is saying they be assessed at 100,000. If you look at the um, the value of the land, that's 80,000. That leaves 20,000 for the structure. Um, you know, a shed costs you $20,000 or a garage. So $100,000 is pretty much out of the question. Um, at 130, that doesn't seem like a whole lot to me for anything these days. Yeah, I just think whatever deferred maintenance or if it's in bad shape, I think the assessor's got it covered in their notes. It just, yeah, like you say, it seems low. So I would motion that we hold the value at 130,000. Okay, is there a second? I second that. All right. It's been moved by Palmer and seconded by Alva that we uh, sustain, uh, that we um, sustain the value at $130,000. Will the clerk please call the roll? Board member Amba. Aye. Board member Bodertha. Aye. Board member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Next, we have a appeal for 3852 Stevens Avenue, case number 22-4053. Questions, discussion on this property. Uh, my only discussion would she put a lot of data in there from realtors and that that type of thing. Um, but I, it, it's hard to analyze it without any kind of she didn't analyze it or put in any form that says here this sold for X or how much a square foot or anything. So um, I do note that some of the comps were 2000 square feet or a little larger and it appears to me that her square footage is 1440. So a little on the lower side and all the sales on Stevens anyway she put in there were uh, 200 to 300,000 so um, I, I think it might need a small reduction but how much um, it's open to discussion. Um, anybody else? Okay um, I, I was amused by the comp on that 3001 Blaisdell that's page 12 of your Oh, this uh, piece, 
Um, that's definitely an outlier in any um, sense of the word. Um, we've got mansard roof and yeah. Um, <clears throat> Stevens, um, the houses on Stevens face the freeway. So they're looking out on, a, on the wall. Now, some people find that okay. Um, there may not be a lot of uh, noise there, depending on how the noise is affected by the wall. Um, but it can it can um, turn off people too to be on the street that faces the freeway, even if there is a wall there. Um, <clears throat> so, 375 seems a bit on the high side, but um, I really don't know the the um, one of the comps that she provided. I'm familiar with. Um, one on um, Third Avenue. That was an over improved house that um, took a while to sell, even though it was really quite nice. Um, it was a small a small house that had been added onto, um, and uh, over improved for the neighborhood. So again, I'm um, I don't know if 375 does sound on the high side. Anybody want to make a motion? I, I'll i move to uh, reduce the value to 350,000. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, discussion. Okay, hearing none, I'll call for the uh, clerk to call that what's been moved by um, Palmer, and second by Pedrosa, am I right? Um, or vice versa. Or vice versa. versa. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. Moved by Pedrosa and seconded by Palmer to uh, reduce the value to 350000 Uh Clerk, call the roll, please. Board Member Amba. Aye. Board Member Pedrosa. Aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Okay, the next item is um, 3220 Blaisdell Avenue, case number 22-0455. Um, Mr. Palmer, you have some comments regarding this and uh, uh, the um, other properties? Um, um, I, I think, was that on the, this morning on the other apartment properties? I, I don't remember if I had one on these. Oh, okay. No. But I am looking. Yeah, this is um, LLC was the applicant, but um, the, the, it's clear from your comments that you have more knowledge than I do about assessing uh, values of um, uh, large rental properties. Um, the kind of bottom line is in our venue where we are here, we really don't have the capacity to do the research, even if the research is provided for us, um, to spend a lot of time going over it and uh, looking at rent rolls and cap rates and whatever. Um, what we tend to do in these large properties when we go into this kind of thing is um, to uh, uh, send it along to the next stage um, and uh, Simply thank them for their appeal and encourage them to go to the next stage where there, there, there will be more opportunity to present the information that can be helpful to the um, assessor. Was this a write in or was the appellant appearing? I, I missed I that. I think this was a write in. Okay. Yeah. So there wasn't much information provided in any case. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's exactly right. It's like this morning, but even less. I mean, I don't, yeah. they don't have even like a rent roll. I don't think they have a, a total, yeah, they have a current monthly rent, but without expenses, you know, I, I, what goes to the bottom line on that, I, it's hard to say. Chair Bland and board member Palmer, just as you recall, the property owner was on the call. He was the one that was referring to 10% increase in taxes and board member Palmer addressed the value increase instead 
just oh i'm sorry this is the same gentleman mr Federson or something like that yeah it's been a long day already but yes that was just okay that was the one yeah then it, yeah i'd have the same thing to say about these too i, I you know they're in the ballpark but as face said I, without any further information what uh, there's not much we can do um so what we really um, need to do here is to sustain the value and send them on their way. If they want to appeal further, they can. But there's not, we really aren't in a position to make any decisions with information provided. <clears throat> or even if there was a lot of information provided, um, it really isn't our role to um, <clears throat> analyze uh, cab rates and rent rolls, et cetera. <clears throat> so I'll entertain a motion on um, 3220 Blaisdell. <clears throat> I, I will uh, motion to sustain the value of 3220 Blaisdell at 1732800 Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. It's been moved by Palmer, seconded by Bedirka to sustain the value of the property at $1,732,800. Will you please call the roll, Pope? Board Member Amba. Aye. Board Member Bodertha. Aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carries. Chair okay. Bland, may I interrupt real quickly? You may. Regarding an income producing property, whether it's commercial, industrial or apartment, if the property owner does provide su su sufficient, there's the word, evidence that does support um, a reduction, they do provide income and expense information, for example, and the board does have board members that have the knowledge, skills and ability to um, review that value, the board can make a reduction in value if they have the information needed. It's just in this case, they didn't, you didn't have what you needed to be able to do that analysis. Thank, Thank you, you. Mr. Monquist. So let's move on to 3230 Nicollet Avenue, case number 22-0456. I'll move again to sustain the value of 3,287,700. Second, please. I'll second that. Okay. It's been moved by Palmer and second by Alba to uh, sustain the value of the property at three million two hundred eighty-seven thousand seven hundred. Clerk, please call the roll. Board Member Amba. Aye. Board Member Bodertha. Aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carries. Next is the uh, property at 2220 Grand Avenue South, case number 22-0457. Discussion or motion? I move to sustain the value at 431,000. Okay, second. I will second that motion. Okay, uh, it has been moved by Padirtha and seconded by Palmer to sustain the value of the property at 2220 Grand Avenue. Clerk, please call the roll. Board Member Amba. Aye. Board Member Padirtha. Aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carries. The, the uh, next one is the appeal for 3627 Nicollet Avenue South, case number 22-0458. Discussion or motion? I just want to make a, a comment that it looks like this property has already been lowered from its uh, from last year. Uh, also, and not that it's not a motion, but I will motion that we sustain the value of two million sixty 
6,600. Second? Anybody? I'll second that. Okay. It's been moved by Bedirtha and seconded by Ambach to uh, sustain the value at 260,600. Please call the roll. Board Member Amba. Aye. Board Member Bodertha. Aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. And Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carries. That concludes the um, appeals for the one to two o'clock session. Um, it looks like we can take a brief recess here. I have um, about uh, quarter to two. So if we reconvene at five minutes to two, so this will be a very brief recess. Yeah, Chair Bland, if I can, yeah. before you do, if you do to choose to take a quick recess, um, a couple of things about this two to three o'clock session. There are um, a substantial amount of cases that you will have presented to you during this session, just to make sure that we stay as timely as possible and um, sticking to the board policy about five minutes. And um, there is one change in that case 22-0461. Um, that property owner will be phoning in. It wasn't indicated on the first hearing schedule. And there are also two cancellations that we'll let you know about when we get to them. Okay, thank you. I have my um, phone here and I'm um, timing people for five minutes. They'll interrupt them if they go beyond. Okay, I think the clerk is also doing that for you, so. Great, okay, thank you. Thank right. you. Brief, brief recess.
Chair Bland and members of the board, the time is now 1.56 p.m. and we will be reconvening from our recess. Madam Chair, I will now call the roll to verify the presence of a quorum. Board Member Amba. Present. Board Member Bodertha. Present. Board Member Palmer. Present. And Chair Bland. Present. There are four members present. Before we uh, resume, um, Assessor Conquest, do you have any comments about our afternoon session? Um, Chair Bland, thank you. We again have a full hour scheduled here, and um, I will guide you through a couple of cancellations that we have once we get to them. It's later on in the hour. Um, I would just mention to the clerk staff, um, Case 22-0461 at 5256 Zenith Avenue did indeed call in. I believe they are present. Let me check the phone numbers. Yes, they are here. And um, I do not know though that our first case has called in, but we will guide you through these as we've done previously. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item is the appeal application for 1015 University Avenue Southeast, which is case number 22-0459. Is the applicant on the line? Madam Chair, the applicant is not on the line and did not uh, verify in advance that they would be attending. Thank you. Um, board members, um, any Just a correction, oh. sorry. They did verify that they were attending. Yeah. Okay. Um, but they do have also they have two cases on here. They're just split up, so maybe they will join eventually. So just so you know. All right, thank you. Uh, next item is the appeal application for 3639 Grand Avenue North, case number 22-0460. Is the applicant Madam, on the line? Madam Chair, the applicant is not on the line. Okay, thank you. Discussion or questions by the board? Okay. Next is application, appeal application for 5256 Venus Avenue South, case number 220461. <clears throat> I believe we do have uh, the applicant on the line, is that correct? Madam Chair, you are correct. The applicant is on the line and the phone is unmuted. Go ahead and you'll have five minutes to present to the board. Uh, Stephen T. Hetland here for 5256 Zenith. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, thank you. Uh, I will proceed. I will just uh, kind of highlight what I put in the uh, the application. Uh, basically, this is a 1925 stucco story and a half. I've owned it since 1986. In 2017, my wife and I remodeled the house and in doing so, we stayed within the same house footprint so that it remains still less than a full two-story house and the basement remains unfinished. We did, however, add a garage. At the time of the remodel in 2017, the city obviously received the plans and had numerous inspections where photos and such were taken. So the city is and was made very much aware of all the changes that were or were not made for valuation purposes. The key point I want to make is that there's been no more uh, further improvements or changes to the house since this remodel in 2017. As the application points out, uh, what I really we're focusing on is the last two valuations that occurred, which the result was an increase in this house of $104,000 just over two years. In 2021, payable 2022, the assessed value jumped 33,000 from then 585 to 618. At that time, I had conversations with the assessor's office uh, regarding this increase and specifically how it seemed to be impacted by the historic pandemic coupled with obviously at that time the lack of uh, sufficient housing stock. I did also receive at that time uh, various comparables of house sales which the uh, office believed justified the increase that they were proposing and I checked out those houses in terms of trying to compare it uh, with the house that I currently have. I concluded at that time that while I believe there was still high the value compared to those comparables. I was able to see how the city was coming up with those numbers based on the 
the interplay between uh, the effect of the pandemic as it related to the increased boom in the housing along with the lack of sufficient housing stock. And so I decided at that time, obviously, to, to increase that in value rather than challenge it. Uh, that was then followed, unfortunately, by this year, where in 2022, payable 2023, there is another jump, this time significantly larger, of 71,000. So they're taking it from now 618,000 to 689,000. And it's, it's simply my belief uh, that, that there is no uh, similar housing event that is taking place in the city beyond what took place in the prior year, which has already been factored in in the increase in this house, that wouldn't justify any further increase, let alone the one we're looking at. And so it's my position that that should stay the same as it was last year when I worked this out with the city and, and took their number and keep it at the $618,000 value. I have not, uh, as I didn't wasn't uh, didn't have the time this year as I did last year to actually work with the city's uh, office and, and do comparables on this, but I do believe my position is accurate, which is that there there is no justification for this increased value, and I think that the uh, the boom housing that we are still experiencing has already been factored in on the increase from the prior year. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, uh, board members. Questions. So this is Mr. Palmer. Uh, I recognize that some of your um, uh, arguments, but is there any indication of houses around you that have sold that that you don't think they're going up from last year in the value that that, that there's no uh, increase in values in residential properties in that area over the year? I, I wish I had the opportunity to provide you some, and, and I, I don't have the opportunity. Yes, I, I think it is my position that if you do compare my house with the similar houses, even in the uh, Fulton neighborhood or Linden Hills neighborhood for that matter, uh, that the increased value of the sale price has not changed from the prior year to this year. I think what you're experiencing is a lot more rebuilds, knockdown rebuilds in which they're putting houses up now over a million dollars, which are dramatically uh, increased size relative to the existing stocks that existed before. And so, yes, I think houses are still being sold in this neighborhood and they're, they're usually in the much higher numbers over a million. If you compare to the houses that stayed within the same footprint as we did and have not boomed or popped the top off to increase it to a full two stories, I think that the value uh, is roughly the same as it was the prior year if you compare it with the actual sale prices being received. I don't see a, a, any further increase from this year from last year, if that answers your question, but it's based just on my impression. I okay. don't have any house sale info to give you. Okay, thank you. Questions or comments from board members for um, our applicant, Mr. Hetland? Well, thank you very much, Mr. Hetland. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, the next item is the appeal application for 45 University Avenue Southeast, number 805, case number 22-0463. I believe this is a call-in, am I correct? Madam Chair, there is one caller that I don't recognize their um, number, so I, I would ask that uh, if the applicant is present that they press star six and unmute themselves. Hello. Hello. Yes. Who this is, is this? This is Mike Mackey. Okay, regarding, Hello? regarding what property? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 45 University Avenue, Southeast Minneapolis, number 805. Okay. Um, you have five minutes to present your case. All right. Our property was assessed at $700,000 for 2022. And we contacted a realtor about selling the property and he valued it at 614 based on similar properties in the area. And he's a specialist in condo sales in both our building, which has 93 units, and the downtown area. 
And we just feel that the county's assessed value is way too high. Okay, um, questions from the uh, board members? Uh, I just have one comment, um, Mr. Mackey. I believe that your market value for January 2 of 2022 is actually reduced a little bit. You're probably looking at your tax statement, which is based on last year's value was 700,000. Uh, my data shows it's at 679,000 for January 2, 2022. That, is that correct? Um, according to, oh, value that's payable in 2022. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so okay. It's 2023 at the top of the letter. Okay, yeah, that's that'd be taxes payable in 2023. It's kind of confusing. Um, okay. Let me ask you, um, uh, I read what your realtor said. I see that I'm not familiar exactly with this cobalt condominium, but on the notes on pricing your home, he said nice units facing the park are selling for 415 per square foot. Yours has nice finishes and is high in the building. What so is is it a eight floor building? Are you on the top floor or what? What's the no? What's it's, a, it's, it's a ten floor building. Okay. And yeah, there's two floors above us. So where? So I'm assuming the upper units have better views over 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 a different kind of area. Well, they have different views. I don't know if you um, you could call it better views, but. Yeah, as you get lower, then you know you're looking more into the park across street, and then you see more of the city as you get up higher across okay. the river. Thank you. Um, this is the uh, cobalt. This is the one over the Lund's uh, grocery store. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, questions, right. board members. Okay. I have a next. question. Oh, I have a quick question. Um, uh, Mr. Mackey, is it, yeah, it, you had a uh, uh, realtor give you an opinion of value. Is it currently listed at the 614,000 then? Uh, it, was it listed at 614? No. No. Okay. It was listed at 650. 650, okay, thank you. Other questions? Um, let's go on that. How long has it been listed, Mr. Mackey? How many months? Just one. On the month. Okay. One month. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Mackey. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, next item is the appeal for 3240 Aldridge Avenue South, case number 22-0464. I believe uh, the speaker is on the line, is that correct? Madam Chair, I do not show that the caller is on the line for the next this one and the next two, but perhaps Ms. Malmquist can verify that. No, they did not verify that they would be here, so they don't have the call-in information for cases 464, 465, or 466. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let's take them one at a time. Any uh, comments from the board regarding 3240 Aldridge? Hearing uh, I just had to have some general comments. He, he included the same handouts for each property, it looks like. Um, and he, he put in a uh, his Schedule E, which just tells you what his uh, gross income was there for for the properties. Um, he does have a rent roll, but um, I, I'm not as familiar with the Minneapolis rents as I used to be. And and for these addresses, like 3240 Aldrich is, is a pretty good rental area. Um, he has rents listed from 750 to 925 and to me, I, and he doesn't have any vacancies listed on this one. So again, it's one of those deals where, I, you know, he seems to be full up on it. I don't know if he's getting market rents for these or he keeps them a little low to make sure that he's filled up. I, it, it's hard to tell. Hey, um, <clears throat> we will um, 
move on to the next one, but you're going to have to bear with me for a moment here because I got my papers out of order. So just take a breath while I get them back in order. Would you please? <clears throat> Okay, so the next one, I think, if I'm correct, is 3100 Gerard. Is that what everybody else thinks? <clears throat> um, Madam, Madam Chair, you are correct. Okay, and is the applicant on the line? Madam Chair, this is the same applicant as the previous case and uh, did not pre-confirm that he would be available today. Okay, thank you. The next item then is, I believe, the same applicant, and it's 1933 Fremont, case number 22-0466. Uh, applicant is not on the line. So we will move on to the next one, which I believe is 301 Kenwood Parkway, number 101, case number 22-0468. And do we have the applicant on the line for this case? Madam Chair, yes, the applicant is on the line. Please press star six to unmute your phone and then you can state your name and address and you'll have five minutes to present to the to the board. Go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is John Knudsen and I live at 301 Kenwood Parkway, number 101. Go ahead. Can you hear? Okay, thank you. Uh, the application for the appeal has most of the information uh, for today's discussion. The only thing I guess uh, I would uh, summarize and highlight is that we've had this property uh, on the market since uh, early October and have had uh, uh, very little traffic. We've had a, a fair number of showings, but not a whole lot of interest. Uh, in mid-January, we decided to do some updating of finishes. Um, so we did some painting, some floor refinishing, cabinet work, new countertops. It then went back on, and as I think I stated, it was about $60,000 in improvements. And that was from uh, January 15th through February, uh, early February. Then it went back on the market the third week in February and has been on the market ever since. The entire property, which incorporates not only the unit, but also two parking spaces in the covered garage and a storage unit in the sublevel, um, is on the market for $1,806,000. Uh, we chose that number in part because that was the estimated market value for taxes payable in 2021, just for the unit itself, not the, not the garage or, or storage spaces. But, we felt that that was probably a, a fairly conservative number based on what we knew from the city and what the uh, realtors were also uh, recommending. What we have found is that the issue that we're bumping up against that is different than some of the other uh, uh, condominiums in the urban core is that our unit is considered a townhome. That is, we have seven uh, floors above us but our front door actually opens out to our patio and, and the sidewalk. So we don't have that additional security of a vestibule and, uh, and, and electronic locks and that sort of thing. And what we're finding and feedback from those that have looked at it is the perception is that since it's part of the urban core, safety and security has become a real issue and that people don't feel safe in a unit that opens up onto the ground floor. So we're struggling a little bit on what to do with this. In talking with our realtor, um, uh, we're looking at, at probably reducing the price even further, uh, maybe uh, one to maybe even $150,000 lower just to see if that will generate uh, more interest. But 
the point we wanted to make is that based on 2023, uh, taxes payable in 2023, we're looking at a valuation of 1,910,000 uh, if you combine the parking space at the storage unit as well as the unit itself. And uh, it's clearly not worth that. Uh, we, um, we, we have lots of evidence to show that it's gonna be significantly less than that. Hence the request for a $200,000 reduction. Any questions? Members, questions? Yeah, uh, this is Mr. Palmer. So you say you're on the first floor and you have an own, your uh, own exterior entry and egress? Correct. Did, does that open up toward, I'm looking at it, toward Kenwood Parkway or toward Bryant Avenue? Or is toward it in the Kenwood back? Kenwood Parkway. Okay. No, it opens up towards Kenwood Parkway, correct. Okay, so I, I, I'm Stadium just guessing that, line. is there sufficient lighting in there or whatever, or is it kind of, I'm just trying to picture how that's a, a real detriment at this point. Well, uh, it is a detriment as we're hearing. Now we've lived there for almost 20 years uh, and we've enjoyed it. But what we're finding now is that everyone is coming into this with a great deal of fear and concern for safety. And it's not just one client, it's everyone that's looked at it has thought we need more security, more privacy, uh, that, that their perception of safety is uh, significantly uh, impacted. Okay, and then you said, uh, so you've only filed on the condo unit, um, but there's two other IDs here. What what was the garage and the, and the storage values as of 19, 2022? So we can just look at the overall total. Yeah. Um, you have that, Andy? I'm trying, I, I don't have that ex handy. What I did do was I added them all up and I gave, I got 1.910. I, the reason I didn't include the storage and the parking is that those are relatively standard across the unit. They're not really impacted by these adverse perceptions of safety. So I really didn't feel it was, it made a lot of sense for me to appeal the, the value of the parking spaces or the storage room it's really the unit itself that's oh. that's being negatively impacted. I, I agree. That's probably how we'd assess it. But I just, for purposes of you asking 1,806,000 in October of 2021, that included the garage and storage units, correct? That asking price? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, it did. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Other questions uh, from the board members? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Knudsen, for your presence. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next item. Um, <clears throat> next item is the application for 1653 West 26th Street, case number 22-0469. This one is canceled, is that correct? Chair Glenn, that is correct. You know. Then our next item is for 615 6th Street Southeast, case number 22-0470. Is the uh, applicant on the line with this one? Madam Chair, the applicant is not on the line. Okay. Any comments from the board members? Yeah, we will move on. Appeal application for 210 West Grant Street, number 616, case number 22-0471. Uh, Catherine Haney is the applicant, and I don't believe she's on the line. Is that correct? Madam Chair, this is a write-in case. Okay. Any um, discussion or comments from the board members? Okay, moving on. Appeal application for, <coughs> excuse me, 3915 Thomas Avenue South, case number 22-0472. This is a write-in case. The applicant is Jason Carl Kemberling. Any comments or questions from the board at this point? Okay, on to the next. Application, appeal application for 804 5th Street Northeast, case number 
22-0473. The, uh, ap the uh, applicant is Jonathan Bianchi. Bianchi. Um, I do, don't believe Mr. Bianchi is calling in. Is that correct? Madam Chair, the applicant is available on the line. Okay. Uh, if you could please press star six to unmute your phone. And once you do that, you will have five minutes to address the board. Bianchi, are you on? Uh, hello, Mr. Bianchi. The applicant is on the is on the line, but the phone is muted. So pre please press star six, and also check to make sure that your phone itself is not muted. Oh, sorry about that. I'm. Can Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, this is Jonathan Bianchi. Okay, go ahead. Um, all right. I, I appreciate you guys' time. Um, I apologize. I've never done this before. Um, I guess uh, what what initially led to my interest in this is I, I have been looking at putting 804 Fifth Street on the market. Um, I've talked to a couple of different realtors and uh, um, kind of went through the properties with them um, in the the amount that they are telling me it's worth is uh, you know substantially less than my assessment for 2023 here um the reason they're giving me is i do still have a very ancient gravity fed furnace in in the the, the duplex there and um the cost to upgrade this to you know your central ac and uh forced air furnace is is substantial i'm looking at um i got a couple of different bids but um, it'll be around forty to forty-five thousand with all the work that goes into that and permits and such. Um, um, what I'm being told by my real estate agents is we'd list it around three thirty-five. Um, with you know the market being crazy, we may be able to get a little bit more than that, but you know nobody's going to go much beyond that with with the condition of the furnaces. Um, so once I got that information from them, I reached out to uh, the assessor listed on it and asked her for details on just how she was arriving at my assessment. Um, she provided me three addresses. The first was 647 Monroe Street, uh, 355. It was listed on all the sales documents, all the advertisements as having a gravity fed furnace. Um, I found in the permit records that that was replaced in 2019, right before the sale in 2021. Um, so I don't believe that's a truly great comp for, for my property. Um, she also listed 1611 Adams Street that was sold for 464. Um, that one again was clearly mislabeled. Uh, as you can see from the marketing photos, um, it, it has a radiator heat in there. Um, and again, it has multiple updates to the interior. So I, I just, I didn't really see how that one even correlated other than, you know, it was built within 20 years of 804. Um, and the final one was 1947 Fillmore Street, which uh, sold uh, just a couple months ago here in February and it sold for 390,000. Um, it does appear to actually have the ancient furnace system like mine and in right down the road similar year so i actually did think this was a strong comp and when i look at the price per square foot on that one it comes up to about 165 uh, you know roughly per square foot um when i when i apply that to the square footage of 804 i come in with a valuation of about 332 thousand dollars which is kind of right where where I'm being told from my my real estate agents. Um, so I guess in my mind, that does seem like a, a, a much stronger comp in an actual Apple to Apple comparison. Um, I just pulled up the, the market again today just to take a peek, just to see if I'm way off base before I uh, made a fool of myself here in front of you guys. But um, I did find uh, 2428 Jackson Street Northeast. Um, it's listed at 407. Um, it uh, it has newer systems in it. It's 3,000 feet. It's a duplex like mine, um, much larger. But you know, again, when I break out the square footage on that, that's at like a, 140 per square foot. And the other one that I found that was similar in size but with newer system was 2513 Pierce Street Northeast, which is currently on the market. It's listed at 425. 
Um, it's got 271 square feet. So when I when I break that one out, it's at 153.37 per square foot, which is again much lower than the valuation of my my property. Um, if if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And I just I really appreciate you guys' time. Members, do you have any questions for Applehead? Yeah, hi, this is Mr. Palmer. Uh, thanks for the information. Uh, I'm, so your realtor said you would list it for 345 in the current condition. Is that is that? He 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 was saying 335 was what he would list it for, and you know he was expecting you know with the crazy sight unseen thing that we might be able to squeak another 10 to 20 grand um, off of it just with how hot the market had been. Okay, and then you said 40 to 45 to uh, take you out your grab, and then is that to put a forced air and a central air both in? Yup, and it would be in the lower and the upper unit, so to get them both kind of up to up to modern standards. Um, so a lot of forced air of that age, do, do you need new duct work, or is the duct work sufficient from the from the gravity to, to be able to nope. use in both units? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the issue. It's an old octopus style one, so it's got asbestos wrap pipes. So I'm looking at asbestos abatement on top of the removal and all new duct work. Um, we'd actually have to, because the upstairs unit is done with a space heater. So I'd actually have to install a furnace in the attic space. Um, and when we were talking to the city, there's some code compliance things. So I'd have to run a condensate line down the down through the property. So I. Uh, Best case, they were they were running around forty to forty five thousand to get them both up to to where they would need to be on the market. Okay, that's good. Last question is: Do you live in one half and do you rent the other half out? So, so no. So, I, and, and I filled out the form and I tried to put the info in there, but it's not technically owner occupied. My my address is nineteen four hundred one hundred forty first and Rogers. Um, my girlfriend is currently living in the lower unit, not paying rent. Um, the upper unit is rented. It is rented at 1200 a month. And um, I'm happy to provide all that documentation. I didn't though, just based on, I don't think you can get an accurate price off of the rent that I'm actually collecting from the duplex. Okay, that that's, I'm just trying to get in the rent. And is the upstairs and lower units pretty similar? Very similar, yep. So if, okay. if I was, right before my girlfriend moved in, I, it was, rented at like 1100 a couple of years ago and then um i you know i would expect i could get 12 1250 for it you know as as is okay thank you thank you other questions from the board members okay um thank you very much for your presentation uh we will be in touch via mail thank you Okay, our next uh, item is get there. Um, the appeal application for 361 Chester Street, case number 22-0474. I don't believe we have an applicant on the line for this one. Here, Glenn, um, this is another cancellation. So when you go through all of your list, we'll just ask, ask you to have a motion to sustain the value. So we have it on record. All right, very good. So then we will move on to appeal application for 110 Bank Street Southeast, number L1230, case numbers 22 0475, 22 0476, and 224 22 0477. I believe that um, just to clear this up, this is for the unit, the parking space, and the storage space. If I'm not correct, let me know. Do we have a, the speaker on the line for this one? Madam Chair, this is a write-in appeal. Okay, very good. In that case, we will move on to making some decisions. Let's see, we're at 2.30. Um, so we have to go back to the beginning. This would be the appeal application for 1015 University Avenue Southeast, case number 
0.59. Questions, discussion on this property? I think what you have that appraisal, I think we discussed that early from September of 21. I've got notes saying we, I would uh, recommend reducing it to just over that value. I've got 360 written down here. Okay, I don't think we're looking at the same thing. What what are you looking at? I'm I'm looking at 35, 45, 18, the first one. Are we? Okay. Um, I guess I got out of order again. Sorry. Um, Chair Bland and Board Member Palmer, you're actually on case 22-0459, which is at 1015 University Avenue Southeast. Okay. okay. Let me know when you get there and we'll proceed. This is, that, is that the Freund House LLC? Yes. yes. Okay, I'm there. Okay, everybody else on the same page? All right. Um, questions and discussion? Well, um, this is um, Board Member Bertha. I see that there's uh, no expenses, that, and it uh, appears to be an apartment property. There's no expenses uh, given here, and it's a uh, current current court case has been filed on it, so they are going to take the appeal. Obviously, for a previous year, uh, they'll be working the system through that approach. Um, and with no other information, and the value went up only 3% this year from last year, um, I don't see we have enough inf information to go forward or with the value decrease. Other comments? Um, Chair Bland, motion. I, I would agree with that. And if they file the tax petition, typically they will discuss that year and follow up years and make a multi year settlement. So that that's the way to go. The motion. I, I'll move to sustain the value at two million six hundred eighty six thousand. Second. I'll second that motion. We have a motion by Bodertha and a second by Palmer to sustain the value for 1015 University Avenue Northeast. Can you call the roll? Clerk. Board Member Amba. Aye. Board Member Bodertha. Aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Okay. Um, our next case is 3639 Bryant Avenue North, case number 22-0460. Is everybody there? Yes. Okay, all right. Questions, concerns, discussion? Uh, Mr. Cornwell doesn't have much uh, data there. I don't see on the application. He asked for 899. Um, this property went from 102 to 120,000. Um, I don't see enough basis for him to, 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 to warrant a reduction based on anything that he supplied. Yeah, it was kind of skinny. His, um, his uh, um, input was, please see attached application. Okay, so we have nothing to go on here. So um, could I get a motion, please? <clears throat> I'll motion we hold the value at 120,000. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. It's been moved by Palmer and seconded by uh, uh, Alba to sustain the value at 120,000. Clerk, please call the roll. Board Member Amba. Aye. Board Member Bodertha. Aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carries. Next is 5256 Zenith, case number 22-0461. Comments, questions, motions? Um, 
Uh, oh, this is one where the um, appellant called in. Uh, he, I think he was the one that was mentioning there was no in, increases in that area from last year, and he, he thought 618 was 618,000 was somewhat okay last year. We didn't think there was any increases, and uh, I think maybe we all can disagree on that, that there probably was some increases out there. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. There were, there were some increases. Um, <clears throat> And this is a, a really popular neighborhood. Uh, Zenith, um, he is one block from the creek, so Zenith doesn't go through. So if you're going south on Zenith from this property, you'll get um, you'll get bent around going um, west um, towards uh, uh, Abbott, and eventually what crosses is the next cross through this France. <clears throat> so there's not a lot of traffic here. Um, it was interesting. I thought that he thought there was no market change since last year when, again, we know that's certainly not the case. Um, I guess the question is, was there as much market increase as this indicates, which is, I believe, a, a fairly substantial. He wants to stay at the 618 of last year um, based on his argument there's been no increase. I think for the neighborhood, as I looked over the information, I think it's, is it Fulton? Um, it yes. was like 8.6% and uh, the, his value went up 11%. But again, everything of those, every, you know, the 8.6 would be on median, last year's median price as opposed to or 2020 to 2021, I believe. So um, we don't have to necessarily follow the 8.6 at all. Yeah, I, I would, with this information saying it didn't go up, I think it went up. It's a matter of degree, so it would either be you just you muted yourself. I don't know how you did that, but you did it. So I'm, I hit the, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I think the choice would be if it, it went up 11 percent, so you'd hold it at 689. If it goes up to the median, as Steve just sent out at 8.6 percent, we'd be at 670. So I, I, I guess I don't know. I'm not. Don't still feel strongly either way. But that's kind of the ballpark. Other comments? I, I, I think if it's appropriate to move, I, I, I move to hold the value at 689. Uh, we haven't really been following uh, neighborhood uh, averages or anything to make our decisions all along, and I without knowing everything about the house and 11% is reasonable to me. I'm going to um, move to hold the value at 689,000. Okay, I'll second that motion. All right. It's been moved by uh, Bedurtha and seconded by Palmer to sustain the value at 5256 Zenith Avenue South. Uh, Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Board Member Amba. Aye. Board Member Bedurtha. Aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Okay. Our next case is, <clears throat> okay, I think I might be out of, no, I've got it right. Uh, the appeal, the application for 45 University Avenue, Southeast, number 805, case number 22-0463. Comments on this one? I, um, this is uh, Adirtha. I think we might defer a little bit to um, current, you know, what the realtor has mentioned, as well as the list price, which is at 650, is lower than the current value of 679. And our 679, I see on here, we've been at 700,000 for three years prior, and it got lowered to 679. And I don't know if that was a, a computer assisted uh, value or if that was an, uh, already had a review on the property. Um, but I would, I would suggest a little lower value than 679. So the property um, near the core did take a hit. Um, um, because of all the unrest. Um, so it did come down from the last, as you said, three years. 
um, <clears throat> I was, there was a bunch of information provided, but it, it made my, I made my eyes cross. Um, it was all jumbled together and I, I was unwilling to take the time to figure out exactly what each of these active pending because the columns were so out of sync and I wasn't going to spend my time trying to figure it out. So um, the things, the few things that I did note were some of the things were much lower, like one on um, the second floor. Um, this was on the eighth floor. That makes a huge difference. Usually when you've got these, um, uh, when they're first selling, uh, the developer will have a premium of at least $5,000 per floor on the very same unit in the same stack and sometimes more. So that needed to be taken into consideration also. Um, I, um, I was torn about the seven or the 679 um, as opposed to maybe something like 650, but I certainly wasn't in agreement about the 614, which is where the owner seems to think it should be. <laughs> Yeah, right at the end, then he admitted when Steve asked him that he's got it listed just briefly for 650. So yeah. um, I I like that. I I looked at it. The only thing I disagree, I mean, his 415 or 420, the realtor says per square foot seems kind of high. But then he mm -hmm. says yours has nice finishes and high in the building. So I'll say 420. Well, that that's hardly any different than 415. It's got to be worth more than than that for an adjustment. But I, if he's asking 650 and that's what he thinks, uh, why should we? I, I think that's where we should go. I think that seems fair. Okay. Um, your motion? I'll move to uh, lower the value from 679,000 to 650,000. A second. I'll second that. Okay. It's been moved by Bedirtha and seconded by Alba to re to reduce the value from six seventy nine nine six seventy nine thousand to six hundred and fifty thousand. Um, please call the roll, clerk. Board member Amba. Aye. Board member Bedirtha. Aye. Board member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Okay, motion carries. Okay, next I believe we have 3240 Aldridge Avenue South, case number 22-0464. Board members? Um, that's the other case. I, you don't, we don't get any answers because they didn't um, call in, but we don't really have income expenses. He's got the rent rolls. Um, these are good addresses. I mean, I worked apartments, 30th and Aldrich. The other ones he had were on 31st and Girard. Um, these are all really prime rental areas and his rent seemed very conservative. So without him providing any further information, I would tend to hold these values. Comments? Would entertain a motion? I will uh, motion for 3240 Aldrich Avenue South to uh, uh, retain the value of 1,681,700. Your second. I'll second that. Okay. It's been moved. By uh, Palmer and seconded by Budurtha to sustain the value of 1,681,700. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Board Member Amba. Aye. Board Member Budurtha. Aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carries. Next appeal is for 3100 Girard Avenue South, case number 
22-0465. Discussion questions, board members. This is another, uh, the same owner, David, uh, David Hansen. I would just read what I said on the last case that the same deals and this is a, another good address of block west of uh, Hennepin and south of Lake. So very good rental area. I would move to uh, uh, retain the current value. I second that. Oh. Okay. Um, I would point out that it's actually at that point it's east of Hennepin, but um, still a good address. Um, so we've had a um, motion by Palmer and a second by Roderica to sustain the value of $2,406,100. Um, Kirk, would you call the roll, please? Board Member Amba. Aye. Board Member Badirtha. Aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carries. Uh, next, another property uh, owned by Mr. Hansen at uh, 1933 Fremont Avenue South. Case number 22-0466. Questions, discussions, board members. Looks like we got pretty much the same situation. Yeah, I, I would agree. It's a similar situation. This is more like a wedge address, but um, still a good address. Uh, I move that we uh, sustain the value of three million three seven. Excuse me, three million seven hundred twenty-six thousand seven hundred. I second that. Okay. We have a motion by Palmer and seconded by Alba to. Um, Sustain the value at three hundred seven three three million seven hundred twenty-six thousand seven hundred. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Board member Amba. Aye. Board member Budertha. Aye. Board member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carries. Next appeal is for 301 Kenwood Parkway, number 101, case number 22-0468. The um, applicant was John Knudsen. Comments, questions? Uh, well, he's listed it. He's made some good points on that, um, and it seems to be we should lower it, but I looked at his, he wants to go to a million six hundred thousand, and that seems like just he's picking a number out that's a lot lower. Um, I was trying to do the math. If you have the garage and the storage, it looked like they were about um, 90,000, something like that. So maybe we, I was thinking about maybe a million seven hundred thousand or a million seven fifty, something in that range. Okay, that would be less than he had in 19, 20, and 21. Yeah, that, that's true. So I, maybe that's too much, but he is asking with a realtor, um, boy, I, I don't know. Yeah. What do you think about his points? Faye, I'm going to ask you, what about his points yeah. about having the own, your own uh, egress out the building? Because, I mean, that's basically next to Parade Stadium and, and, and it's, 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 it's a pretty nice area. Yeah. And... I'm working in Bloomington. We had condos and, and apartments, townhouses, and people liked having their own ingress and egress instead of having to go through the lobby or whatever. So, yeah, for me, that's a plus. For other people, they're they're concerned about it. Um, I'm going to guess that <clears throat> if the feedback has been people are concerned about that for safety, I'm guessing if that hasn't really been the concern, but it's just the sort of thing that the the realtor um puts in the feedback space uh that was maybe mentioned maybe not uh to me now i will say that i know that in that area um you know i'm in a citizen app and so i always get notifications about carjackings and attempted break-ins and actual break-ins whatever and it has increased in 
that um, you know Kenwood um, uh, Lake of the Isles area beyond what it far beyond what it used to be. Um, but I don't personally see that as a um, uh, detriment. As a matter of fact, I see it as a plus. Um, feels more like a house than a condominium or an apartment that way. Um, <clears throat> so it's interesting to me. He's asking for a million and six, and yet he's gone to market for a million eight oh six. So um, that doesn't quite fit together. Sorry. Um, I have a comment. Um, uh, I think you know having a, a unit number of one hundred one shows that he's on. I know it's a two level, so his upper level probably his bedrooms are got a little bit of a view, but he won't have like the. I think it's probably a six story building or so. Uh, won't have the views that come out the top. Um, and and uh, just to correct uh, Mr. Palmer, I think it's forty four thousand six hundred is the total uh, for the two garages and the storage area. Is the difference between the million nine, ten, six hundred that for all three of them, or all four PIDs, if you will, and the million eight six 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 sixty six. So uh forty-four thousand, forty-five thousand. So yeah. So thank you, Steve. So I, I think with this trouble of having you know, um I, I agree, I don't believe going down to the one point six, but um uh, something something in that mid seventeen uh one point seven. Two five to one point seven five, possibly. I cannot picture this building. It was built in two thousand two, and um, I'm sure I've been by it, but I can't. Um, I can't figure out what it looks like. It's um, <clears throat> according to this, it's three floors. So um, he indicated something like there's seven units all together. Um, so I think it's unusual. Um, Sounds like a pretty unique building. I'm not yeah, familiar with uh, it. Configuration. It'd be interesting rather than your, you know, standard uh, cookie cutter situation. I, um, I, I, I just have to, I, you know, I worked with this building when it was built and all. I believe it's taller. It's, I, I'm going to say it's 15 to okay. 18 units. Uh, a lot of large uh, floor plates, uh, you know, two or three per floor. So there really isn't very many units. If I'm thinking about hopefully the same building right across from where the uh, spoon with the cherry is. Um, yeah. If I'm unless I'm wrong, I I believe it's that very nice building where there's private elevators that you know take folks to their units upstairs. Yeah, according to to the information from the city, there it this particular unit has three floors, first, second, and third. So oh, the um, particular unit, unit. the okay. unit itself. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Right. Um, well, if you just took, the, he's asking a million eight oh six now. Um, if you take the what did you say it was forty four thousand six hundred off for the garage and the storage, you're at about a million seven sixty. I would I would be open to lowering it to that. That's if it sells it might sell for less than that. It's been on the market, but at least we're right where we should be on the asking price. Yeah, I guess my question would be: Does the garage space and the storage space have separate PIDs? Yeah, otherwise, they did. You mentioned that somewhere in there. I, I otherwise they're all, all rolled into one. <clears throat> They'll all be. Uh, they all have their separate PIDs. O -O yeah, on his. O four three six, four three seven, and four six three. Yeah. So. Okay, so really, it, I'm just talking about the unit. Right, and okay. he's right. I, for my, we used to, or the assessors usually keep the garages and storage fairly close as far as values and, and change it on the unit. Yeah, those uh, don't when, change much. You're right. Yeah. Well, so. um, hmm. yes, we need a motion unless people have things they still want to say. Uh, I'll, I'll motion we reduce the value of 301 Kenwood Parkway 101 to $1,765,000. It's about $100,000 decrease. Okay, any um, second on that? Second it. Okay. We have um, a motion by Palmer, seconded by Alva to reduce the value to $1,700,000. Was it sixty-five thousand? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, clerk, would you call the roll, please? Board member Amba. Aye. Board member Badirtha. Aye. Board member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. I'm Thank sorry, you. I didn't catch that. Aye. Aye. Thank you. There are four eyes. No, there's three eyes and an A. I apologize. I okay. couldn't hear that very clearly. Okay. There are three eyes and one nay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Motion carries. So Chair Bland on the next case, 22-0469. This was a cancellation, so you'll just be asking for a motion to sustain the value. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what is the address we're looking at? At 1653? That is correct. Okay. Um, so, uh, 1653 West 26th Street, case number 22-0469. I would um, entertain a motion. I move to sustain the value at 899,000. Okay, is there a second? I'll second the motion. All right. It's been moved by Bedirtha and seconded by Palmer to sustain the value of uh, 20, or 1653 26th Street West at 899,000. Would you please call the roll, clerk? Board member Amba. Aye. Board member Bedirtha. Aye. Board member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carries. Next item is next item is is it uh, um, 615? Um, okay. And I'm out of order here. <clears throat> okay. Um, next item is 615. 6th Street Northeast, and uh, that is case number, oops, ahead of myself here. Sorry. Madam Chair, the property is located at 615 6th Street Southeast, case number 22-0470. Thank you. How I got out of order here, but um, well, I changed him to Faye because he the, uh, they had mentioned this was the same owner as an earlier property and he might appear, oh, so I moved okay. it around too. Okay, all right, so it's 615 6th Street Southeast, case number 22 0470. Um, discussion. Well, I was really hoping someone might show up on these because that other one was um, on university and they, they had huge units on that one. Um, I'm guessing it's 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 got to be student housing or perhaps for families of student housing, something like that, the newer build. Um, uh, we held that one. He doesn't have any information to, to really cut this one that I can see. Um, uh, but I did notice that he's got um, on his rent roll, he has uh, six units and two are empty at the beginning of the year out of the six, which is looks like he filled one up, but that's kind of problematic. But I, I without anything else to go on, I, I don't know that I can really make any decision. Okay. Other comments? Uh, this property owner also, but uh, same as before, he has it uh, a petition filed in, in uh, uh, state tax court, so he can take it further that way too. That, that, there you go. That's perfect. Um, let's have a motion. Uh, I move to uh, sustain the value at 705,800. Second. I'll second that motion. Second. Okay. 
It has been moved by Bodurtha and seconded by Palmer to sustain the value of the property at 615 6th Street Southeast. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Board Member Amba. Aye. Board Member Bodurtha. Aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carried. Okay, I believe our next one is 210 Grant Street West, number 616. Is that correct? Okay, questions, comments? <clears throat> there is uh, very little information here, just a couple of sales um, that don't even tell you, tell us what floor they're on. Um, one was in December of 2020 and one was in February of 21. Um, <clears throat> so um, not much here to go on. I, I believe I believe the um, 2021 sale, I don't know if I looked it up somewhere, is on the fourth floor. So still a couple floors below the um, uh, appeal property on that's on the sixth floor, but I do I do not know what the first one is. Uh, I think it's a similar size at 893 square feet. I think is similar, um, but not again, not much to go on. The appellant wasn't asking for a lot. I mean, they were, you know, we're looking to go down to 190. Um, last year was 225 and got some kind of reduction, but that probably speaks to the possibly the a condo market down in that area near Loring Park, maybe. Um, had some uh, problems this year or over the last few years with uh, values. I'm not. I'm not sure. I but uh, its location puts it down down in that Loring Park area. But again, I don't have any information to necessarily lower it very much, um, other than knowing the condo market in that area. Um, this building is right across from the Dandelion uh, Water Fountain, and it backs up to the Greenway. Um, don't know what the view is on this one, but um, it's easy to get a uh, nice either greenway view or, or uh, morning view, morning park view uh, in a lot of the units. <clears throat> um, again, there was not much information to really go on here. Um, so um, I wouldn't be opposed to doing some reduction, but um, I'm not really pushing for it either. It, the, the condo market down there has recovered a bit from uh, where it was uh, in 2020 and uh, even 2021. Um, one of the uh, problems that has occurred in buildings the other side of the park is they've had one of those city loans where it can't be paid off. And it's, you know, every unit is assessed like a gazillion dollars and I'm not uh, exaggerating. Um, so that has to be passed on from owner to owner, and it really has um, affected the, uh, the values in those units. This is not one of those buildings, but um, others have been affected by that. I don't have any feel for this one, so whatever you guys decide is um, good for me. I, I just don't know where to go. Personally, would probably vote for sustaining the value. It has actually come down some, but um, I'd be open to other suggestions. If anybody feels strongly. Board members, I just also again want to remind you that the burden of proof is on the property owner to provide market evidence that the value should be reduced. I will move to sustain the value at 213000 I'll second that motion. Okay. It's been moved by Bedurtha and seconded by Palmer to sustain the value of the property at um, uh, 210 Grant Street West, number 616. Where would you call the roll, please? Board Member Amba. Nay. 
Board Member Badurtha. Aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are three ayes and one nay. Motion carries. Okay, next is um, 3915 Thomas. And that is uh, uh, 3915 Thomas Avenue South, case number 22-0472. Comments, questions? Uh, this appears to be another one where he's just um, challenging the rapid increases of values, which I think have been happening as we know. So um, he has a increase of 10.7%. And we've seen other ones, 9, 10, 11%. He doesn't really, uh, he has market values from prior years. I, I don't, Think he has anything except for he bought the house for 525 in 2020 so i don't think that's too ridiculous for it to go up in a year and a half uh i'm sorry over two years to um 597 but um perhaps it is a little high i don't know well based on the fact that um it's up to the owner to provide us with information he's provided no information about anything that would be a comparable He's just simply yeah. talked about his own property and what needs to be done or hasn't been done. And so I would say that he's failed to uh, provide any information for us to make any decision on other than uh, a sustain. So I'll entertain the motion. <clears throat> I move to hold the value, sustain the value at 597,000. Okay, second. I second that. Okay, it's been moved by Badurtha and seconded by Alba to sustain the value at 3915 Thomas Avenue South. Clerk, would you call the roll? Board Member Amba. Aye. Board Member Bodertha. Aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carries. Next, we have deal for uh, 804 Fifth Street Northeast, case number 22 4073. Comments and questions by the board members? <clears throat> um, I thought this guy made a good case and he agreed the one comp was quite good that still had the gravity furnace that the assessor provided. So, um, what does that put it down to? Somewhere 40 to 45 for the HVACs at 382. I, I I don't have an exact number, but somewhere around 350, give or take, or something like that, 340. Okay, other comments? All those gravity furnaces, to know them is to love them but you people love them. <laughs> no moving parts to break down, <laughs> but they are a bear to take out. That's for sure. And they're, they're just huge too. Sitting they down are, the yeah. yeah, they take up a lot of real estate in the basement. That's for sure. <clears throat> that that uh, lowering the value down that, that direction is uh, appropriate for what the realtor had told them, you know, maybe listed at 335 with the hope of an uptick of 10 to 20,000, possibly when you hit the market and uh, get people in there, uh, possibly. So that 350, 360 range or th whatever, it's gonna be fine. Um, motion. Okay, next we have 3915 Thomas Avenue I'll second that. Okay. It's been moved by Palmer and um, seconded by Badurtha that we reduce the value of uh, 805, 804 Fifth Avenue Northeast uh, from 
Clerk, would you please call the roll? Board member Amba. Aye. Board member Badirtha. Aye. Board member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Uh, next case is the application for 361 Chester Street, case number 22-0474. Um, the um, applicant provided kind of like the zero information. Um, Chair Bland, this was a cancellation, so you're just asking for a oh. motion to sustain. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I will motion we sustain the value at uh, 361 Chester at 556,000. Okay. I second, second that. Okay. It's been moved by uh, Palmer and seconded by Alba to um, sustain the value at uh, 361 Chester Street. Rick, would you call the roll? Board member Amba. Aye. Board member Bedertha. Aye. Board member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carried. Okay, the final um, one we have to consider is um, 110 Bank Street, Southeast, number L1203, case numbers 22-04575, 22-0475, and 22-477. And I believe what we have here is a unit, a garage space, and a storage space. Am I correct? That is correct, Chair Bland. Okay. So, any comments? Well, the, the the whole premise is that are talking about the sale of unit 1003. Um, that's only two floors below this one, but it's hard to know. It's just, what's the square footage of that? Uh, I don't know if they're the same. Um, they say it's identical in layout, so apparently it is um, and renovated. Um, so um, that would indicate a, a slight reduction but um, we don't have any further market information than just that one sale. So um, that's, it's an indication, but it's not, you know, substantiated. Um, yeah, I didn't find the information that was provided at all helpful. Um, it, it just, you know, didn't, didn't give me enough information to make any judgments. Any other comments? entertain a motion. I'll move to sustain the value at five hundred and six thousand dollars. Okay, and a second. I'll second that motion. All right. It's been moved by the Dursa and seconded by Palmer to uh, sustain the value of um, <clears throat> Property at 110 Bank Street, number 1203, at $506,000. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Board Member Amba. Aye. Board Member Badirtha. Aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carries. Um, thank you, everybody. Our final item today are properties with valuation changes being brought by the city assessor. I will call on Rebecca Momquist to provide that list to the board. Uh, those of you who haven't had the opportunity to list to uh, Assessor Momquist, um, read off these, uh, read off this list. You're going to be stunned. She's uh, spectacular at it. But this is going to take a while. Am I correct, uh, Assessor Momquist? Chair Bland and board members, good afternoon. 
Yes, I believe we have around 150 to read to you today. Um, this is the first portion of that list and we will end your last meeting whenever that is with the conclusion of this list. These are cases that we're bringing to you that are within that 10 day window where the assessor cannot make a change without the approval of the local board. So what we will do is we I will read the property ID number, the original market value and the assessor's recommended value. You do not need to take action after each one. You just need to take action after the conclusion of the list. If there is an item that the board wishes for us to pull from this list for further review, you can always request that and we could get back to you at a later meeting. With that being said, with if you're OK with it, I will get started. Right ahead. We're in uh, anticipation of your incredible talent. All right, I'm going to read the first one to make sure I have them in proper order and the clerk's team and our team in the assessor's office can make sure that I have the correct first one. Um, property ID number is 110292434001. Original value 503,000. Recommended value $460,000. Is that correct, clerk and assessor team? Chair Bland and Assessor Momquist, that is the top item on my list as well. Thank you, Clark. All right, here we go. PID 12028243300028, original value 416,000, indicated value $385,000. ID 02028-2443-0036, original value $207,000, indicated value $185,000. 18028-232200014, original value $260,000, recommended value $240,000. 140292413-0032, original value $545,000, Recommended value $515,000. 110292423-0069, original value $343,000, indicated value $295,000. 220284430104, original value $345,000, recommended value $314,000. 1802823440100, original value $234,000, recommended value $205,000. 0802824330124, original value $438,000, recommended value $365,000. 1202924230161, original value $311,000, recommended value $115,000. 01028244301009, original value $283,000, recommended value $210,000. 0402924410123, original value $234,000, recommended value $210,000. 0402924240046, original value $278,000, recommended $230,000. 2002924430098, original value $386,000, recommended $345,000. 1402824410071, original value $463,000, recommended value $420,000. 2702924140378, original value $549,000, recommended value $475,000. 2102824310086, original value $420,000, recommended value $370,000. 3202924310025, original value $672,000, recommended value $640,000. 1702824320019, original value $479,000, recommended value $415,000. 1702824310146, original value $429,000, recommended value $405,000. 2302924210853, original value $263,000, recommended value 
120282421188, original value $350,000, recommended value $305,000. 170282434002 original value $446,000 recommended value $380,000. 140292423029 original value $516,000 recommended value $475,000. 150282422029 original value $396,000 recommended value $360,000. 170282432006 original value $964,000 recommended value $890,000 150282414037 original value $500,000 recommended value $445,000 050292444092 original value $281,000 recommended value $261,000 1702824340164 original value $1,006,000 recommended value $950,000 1411821210024 original value $272,000 recommended value $236,000 0802824210073 original value $546,000 recommended value $470,000 2102824110081 original value $423,000 recommended value $355,000 130282411064 original value $627,000 recommended value $522,000 0802823 excuse me 2413033 original value $595,000 recommended value $565,000 1702824140141 original value $455,000 recommended value $420,000 3302924110090 original value $553,000 recommending $525,000 2802924330017 original value 400 or $714,000 recommending $630,000 1102924330017 original value $693,000 recommending $610,000 0102924320108 original value $410,000 recommending $355,000 1111821210155 original value $487,000 recommending $425,000 2002824110069 original value $587,000 recommended $530,000 0502823320045 original value $576,000 recommending $525,000 0502824210302 original value $293,000 recommending $260,000 1102924130119 original value $296,000 recommending $273,000 0902824330185 original value $164,000 recommending $22,000 0902824230090 original value $147,000 recommending $60,000 2102924320204 original value $158,000 recommending $85,000 1702924410013 original value $208,000 recommending $120,000 0902924340189 original value $127,000 recommending $85,000 0902924140097 original value $129,000 recommending $85,000 2102924320053 original value $209,000 recommending $155,000 0902924210155 original value $177,000 recommending $115,000 1602924120146 original value $176,000 recommending $120,000 2802924340146 
original value one million seven hundred sixty thousand dollars recommending a million five hundred fifty thousand dollars two one zero two eight two four three three zero 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 nine original value four hundred three thousand dollars recommending three hundred and eighty thousand dollars one six zero two nine two four three one zero zero one eight original value two hundred fifty five thousand dollars recommending one hundred and eighty two thousand dollars one six zero two nine two four four three zero zero six one original value two hundred seventy two thousand dollars recommending one hundred ninety thousand dollars i'm going to pause there there's something in the chat um i believe it's case two two zero nine two nine seven pid zero nine zero two nine Nine two four three three zero one eight five. Original value was one hundred sixty four thousand dollars. Or is there a correction to the recommended value? Staff. No, it was PID Rebecca. So you've got it correct now. Just read the new value, and that is correct. Okay. So and the um, indicated value is twenty two thousand dollars. Okay. And, and Director Malmquist, uh, the clerks believe also the next case for 0222-0299, if you could restate that one as well. Okay, thank you. 09029-2423-0090, original value $147,000, recommending $60,000. Okay. I may be rereading one, but that's okay. I'm down to case 22-0315-09029-2413-0030, original value $243,000, recommending $195,000. 24029-2423-0083, original value $596,000, recommending $550,000. 12029-2423-0043, Four four two zero zero four seven original value four hundred twenty thousand dollars recommending three hundred ninety five thousand dollars zero eight zero two eight two three 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 zero zero nine zero original value four hundred twenty seven thousand dollars recommending three hundred seventy five thousand dollars one seven zero two eight two four two four zero one zero one original value three hundred fifty nine thousand dollars recommending three hundred forty thousand dollars Two five zero two nine two four two three zero zero seven six original value forty million five hundred thousand dollars recommending thirty nine million dollars one seven zero two eight two four one four zero one zero eight original value seven hundred thousand dollars recommending six hundred twenty five thousand dollars two zero zero two eight two four one one zero one two five original value seven hundred forty thousand dollars recommending six hundred seventy five thousand dollars Zero eight zero two nine two four 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 zero one four two original value one hundred sixty nine thousand dollars recommending one hundred fifty thousand dollars zero two zero two eight two four one one zero one six six original value two hundred fifty seven thousand dollars recommending two hundred five thousand dollars two four zero two eight two four two one zero zero six nine original value three hundred thirty seven thousand dollars recommending two hundred seventy thousand dollars one two zero two nine two four four one zero zero seven seven original value four hundred ninety nine thousand dollars recommending four hundred seventy five thousand dollars one two zero two eight two four three two zero one six five original value four hundred seven thousand dollars recommending three hundred sixty three thousand dollars personal property account one zero three four five original value seven hundred nineteen thousand dollars recommending six hundred eighty thousand dollars one seven zero two eight two four three four zero one six five original value nine hundred forty five thousand dollars recommending nine hundred thousand dollars. One seven zero two eight two four two one zero zero nine eight original value four hundred ten thousand dollars recommending three hundred sixty six thousand dollars. One five zero two eight two four two two zero one zero one original value three hundred sixty five thousand dollars recommending three hundred thirty thousand dollars. Two two zero two eight two four two one zero one eight two original value four hundred forty two thousand dollars recommending four hundred thousand dollars two three zero two nine two four one three zero five six seven original value seven hundred forty eight thousand dollars recommending seven hundred thousand dollars one seven zero two eight two four one three zero two zero two original value four hundred twenty two thousand dollars recommending three hundred ninety five thousand dollars 
120282422016, original value $293,000, recommending $270,000. 1002824230022 original value $327,000 recommending $275,000 2102824130012 original value $531,000 recommending $490,000 1502824320047 original value $938,000 recommending $850,000 0502824240086, original value $626,000, recommending $560,000. 2102824240028, original value $348,000, recommending $325,000. 1402924210170, original value $339,000, recommending $290,000. 1802823410005 original value $621,000 recommending $590,000 2102824140118 original value $556,000 recommending $450,000 0802824230029 original value $572,000 recommending $521,000 2002824 410151 original value $385,000 recommending $355,000 0102924110057 original value $459,000 recommending $420,000 2102824340086 original value $426,000 recommending $380,000 1602824320121 original value $777,000 recommending $735,000 0802824230124 original $345,000 recommended $311,000 2002824120093 original $335,000 recommending $295,000 1102824210097 original 327 recommending $295,000 2802824440075 original 937,000 recommending 900,000 1302824430012 original 323,000 recommending 300,000 2902924110153 original 456,000 recommending 335,000 2302924430176 original $36,000 recommending 29,700 0802824240067 original 516,000 recommending 470,000 1702824140062 original 1,439,000 recommending 1,175,000 original 737,000 dollars recommending 702,500 dollars 2302924320517 original 304,000 recommending 250,000 1402924420064 original 467,000 recommending 368,000 0602823340074 original 332,000 recommending 270,000 33029241101045 original 1,400 recommending 1,300,000 0802824340097 original 657,000 recommending 615,000. 1002824330059 original 442,000 recommending 375,000. 0602823230106 original 359,000 recommending 265,000. 1602824310046 original 669,000 recommending 645,000. 3402924330159 original 350,000 recommending 315,000. 2002824120077 original 419,000 recommending 350,000. 1402924340097 
244100070, original 464,000, recommending 410,000. 210292412 original 312,000, recommending 285,000. 3102923430170, original $389,000, recommending $360,000. 1102824420020, original 427,000, recommending $380,000. 3302924220077, original 924,000, recommending $875,000. 2302924140011, original 571,000, recommending $528,000. 1602824330106, original 717,000, recommending 655,000. 2302824140010, original 465,000, recommending 340,000. 3102923220130, original 387,000, recommending 360,000. 0702824. 3440191, original 427,000, recommending 375,000. 0402824210002, original $2,090,000, recommending $1,535,000. 1302824140124361,000, original, recommending 325,000. 0802823220004, original 531,000, recommending 478,000. 2102824140044, original 589,000, recommending 530,000. 3102923240076, original 606,000, recommending 550,000. 1302824440136, original 195,000, recommending 160,000. 2202924230132, original 238,500, recommending 205,500. 3602924440004, original 170,000, recommending 100,000. 3102923340019, original 318,000, recommending 220,000. 3602924210366, original $747,000, recommending 635,000. 3402924310036, original 574,000, recommending 540,000. 0602923240012, original $309,000, recommending $284,000. 0202824330236, original $1,228,000, recommending $1,110,000. 2802924420065, original $580,000, recommending $550,000. Finally, 0502824240087, original 1,344,000, recommending 1,118,000. And with that, Chair Bland, that concludes the reading of the recommendations being brought by the assessor to the local board for your approval. Madam Chair, Madam Chair and Director Malmquist, uh, can we go back to a couple of cases, um, specifically case 22-0371, uh, both clerks uh, believe you uh, misread the P the P PID number for that case. And then also um, case 22-0398, staff's asking if you could read that again into the record. Okay, thank you. 03028242301240, original value 345,000, recommending 311,000. And then Clerk Hansen, I think you said 398. Okay. Yes. Uh, 1402924410031. Original 416,000, recommending 375,000. Thank you. Thank you, Assessor Mom Chris. Now, um, just to clarify, all of the things that uh, she just read, if I have it cor correct, are people who um, uh, challenged their evaluation and the assessor, assessor did uh, adjust evaluations. 
So a great big thank you to 150 people who agreed with the assessor so that we didn't have to go through those cases sitting here today. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. You have a marvelous talent. I couldn't have done it. So may I please have a motion to concur with the recommendation for valuation changes brought by the city assessor. Motion, please. So moved, we'll do, we'll do. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. It has been moved by Bedurtha and seconded by Palmer to concur with the recommended valuation changes for those properties read into the record. I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Board member Amba. Aye. Board member Bedurtha. Aye. Board member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. That carries and the motion is adopted. With that, we've completed all items on the agenda this afternoon. With Madam that, Chair. Look. Madam Chair. Yes, uh, before, I'm sorry, uh, maybe uh, board member Palmer is going to talk about this as well. Um, I believe the board needs to go back to item 26 on its agenda for 110 Bank Street Southeast. There were two other cases. Uh, the board dealt with the first case, case 22-0475 but there is also case 220476 and 220477 that still need to be considered by this board. Um, all right. Um, so one is a garage space and one is a storage space. I've never seen a storage space giving a, a separate ID before, but um, you know, go ahead. And um, I don't know what the sustained value is, however, and what the value is of the other two. Do we have that somewhere? I have that one. Um, I believe on the on the condo unit itself, we sustained it because we didn't give give enough information. So I'm yeah. suggest I'm going to suggest that on this one, uh, 110 Bank Street G29. I uh, recommend we sustain the value of 24,100. Okay, is there a second? I second that. Okay. It's been moved by Palmer and seconded by Alva that we sustain the value on the property at 110 uh, Bank Street Southeast, uh, G29 at 24,100. Um, Clerk, would you please call the roll? Board Member Amba. Aye. Board Member Badurtha. Board Member Badurtha. Oh, you did. Oh, sorry, aye. Board Member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. Motion carries. We have a motion on uh, case number 22-0477, which I believe is the storage unit. I move that we uh, sustain the value at uh, $1,500. Is that what it was? Wow, I'm going into the storage unit business. Um, okay, do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved by Bedurtha and seconded by Alba to sustain the value uh, for case number 22-0477. Would you please call the roll? Board member Amba. Aye. Board member Bedurtha. Aye. Board member Palmer. Aye. Chair Bland. Aye. There are four ayes. The motion is adopted. Now, have we completed all the items on the agenda for this afternoon? Okay. Yes, Madam Chair. Great. Um, <clears throat> I do have a question. Are, have the packets been sent out already for tomorrow? Does anyone know? Anyone I did receive, I got mine about an hour and a half ago. You did, okay. Then mine must be down there. Thank you. Without I just objection. got the morning. Excuse me. I just got the morning one. Is there an afternoon one coming too? We're just doing morning tomorrow. We don't have an afternoon tomorrow, and okay, we're doing great. morning Thank on Wednesday too. So just okay. two, two more mornings. It may be. Not, does it look, uh, staff? Does it look like we'll have uh, spill over into next week at this point? Chair Bland and board members, we definitely will go into next week. Okay. Thanks We've received 
about another 120 cases before the board convened. So we have several hours ahead of us still. Okay, excellent, I think. Okay, so now without objection, I will declare this meeting recessed until Tuesday, April 19th, 2022 at 9 a.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank Mark. you, board members. Thank you. Are you still there, Maddie? I'm still here, Don. Did you have a question? I, are you just going to send out the invites again, like 15 minutes before? So we can. You to should the be on the invites. They should, it should show on your calendar now. I think she resent them. Okay. Cause yeah, well, they weren't in our calendar this morning, but um, I'll look at the calendar then. Yeah, and they if should not, be there. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Have a good evening.